Welcome to Separating Reports. Are you still printing like it's 1999? Hey, I'm Eric, and um, we got a strange thing in uh, in Business Central. It's the fact that a lot of reports are kind of still designed to print on paper. And, and the reality is that most reports never print to a printer anymore they print to pdfs or other files and uh, and that introduces a uh, an interesting problem let, let me let me show you um so here is a business central version 21 the latest and greatest and i go and let, uh, let me run the customer state meds there are two i'll go with the the plural version um and and this is great i add a date filter and you know then i say print and uh maybe i i print as as a pdf here right and uh, it has a very strange name dynamic file handler but but we we can live with that the problem is that now I have one PDF file, in this case with five statements in it, because I, there's five customers. But but so so how can I easily grab this this page and send to this customer or that page and send to that customer? I can't because it's one PDF document. But if we you know. If this was 1999 or, or even even older in this case, no, when when we were printing on, like like my old matrix printer here, um, then you know you got a lot of pages and you separated them. That was that was an easy task. So if you, the process was to print out customer statement, you run the report, you get a whole stack of paper, and somebody would separate it into different. Uh, you know put them in one envelope per customer whatever the delivery means were and and great and that's kind of how a lot of reports are still done so if you need to print 100 invoices uh, from different customers you also get one pdf file uh, so we kind of need a way to separate these things um so that's totally what we're going to do in this video. Uh, let me close some uh, all tabs while you're not looking at what's actually on my screen here. Um, and let's get into this guy. This is Studio Code. And I created a small project so we can uh, we can get started. So what what's important to understand is that let me actually go here and here and select reports and do customer statement statement wow there must be something wrong with my keyboard um so so when we have a report here so whenever you call a report one call to report gives you one pdf file or whatever you are you have selected as the output so we can never get a single report to output more than one piece of output so what we need to do in this case that we clearly needs to call we need to call the same report five times in order to get five outputs um, and the way we can do that is let's create a new report so we will call this report for customer statement uh, separato that's clearly a report like that customer statements separato that's pretty cool um and and this is kind of a a wrapper a front end so so this has to be processing only right um let's put a usage category on it for reports because that's how we fly application area all um so we still need a data set and the data you, you 
the data set in this type of report should be the element where you want to perform separation on. So in this case, let's create a data set and add a, uh, a data item for the customer. Because we, if we want to do customer statements, then we need to separate by customer. Um, and uh, request filter fields, let's just go with number and date filter, I think. So what, let's go back to this guy for a, wow, did I lose that completely? Let's see if we are here. Uh, <laughs> customer statements. Yeah, we need to do a, if, if we try to run this without a date filter, then it will get mad at us. So we need to tell the date filter. So we'll add, we'll use those as request fields on the wrapper report. Then let's so so here here's the here's the problem with with a report like this is that there are all these options. Um, so we almost need to run the report without running the report and we can actually do that let me let me show you. so if we go here and then we grab the the trigger on predate item um so now we can actually do let's create a variable here and say statement that's a report and this is the customer statements and and for this i need a global variable let me show you so parameters text so if here i do parameters equal statement meaning that's the report variable and then there's a function called run something run request page and you can even take existing parameters we don't care about that so we'll just run it and now we get the parameters to the report as uh, as a text string so if we go so that's pretty good so let's go back to on after get record because if we want to run the inner report. So this is the outer report, and we want to run the inner report five times. Then there has to be in the on F, in in the loop uh, of our data item here. So let's see. In order to run a report, we can call report dot save as. The other save as are for on prem, so they do not work here. So save as. Let's look at what parameters we need. We need a number. And we could type something like this, and that would be fine, but th that's not how we roll. We do report colon colon customers statements, right? Uh, and you know, if, if the tooltip goes away, or the intelligence, whatever you call it, goes away, let's actually move over here. Uh, you can always do shift control space, and then you get, you see, it even highlights the one. And, and see this parameters a string of request a string of request parameters as XML for some reason use run the repo the parameter string is retrieved from the return value to a run request page that's what we did so excellent so we just need to pass this guy parameters and let's see what is the next report format let's go with PDF then we are we need an out stream and we need a ref, so we need to tell what record we're running as. So let's add, create those two variables. We we'll create an outstream, um, but we cannot just so. And there's a video on the channel about streams. There are several videos on the channel about streams. Uh, so stream is like a pipe that connects something, and in this case, uh, we have a report that will pump data into a stream but that stream has to go somewhere so let's create that somewhere and that could be a templop code unit so in order for that to work we'll do a uh, templop.create outstream so now this pipe 
is connected to whatever you put into this stream, it goes into this temp blob. Uh, and and we, then we just give the report uh, this pipe that, hey, whatever you produce, put it into this one. Um, and then we need a ref also. Uh, and what is a, that's a record ref we need. And a record ref, there's also lots of videos that goes into details on, on record refs. So uh, it's like a virtual point that I can point to uh, to any table. Uh, maybe you should subscribe if you haven't seen those videos. Anyway, so we clearly need, um, wow, database customer. We need a ref to the customer table. Um, we don't need actually need a ref to the the current record uh, what we need to pass are filters so for in all of that then we'll create a a field ref because when you're working with record refs you cannot set a filter on a record ref we cannot there's no not a ref dot set filter that doesn't exist but we can do a grab a field so in this case we'll get a field reference to field number number one that is uh, that's the doc uh, customer not doc, the customer number and then we can do set range and and grab the customer number that we're in but we also need to pass so so when when you see when we're running this guy right uh, now we we use the parameters piece to take care of all this crap up here but since we're passing the customer rec in, we cannot really save stuff here. Uh, maybe we can, but but I don't trust this. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to create another ref here, and I think I think it's field number fifty five. But but let's actually not be that cocky. Uh, we have a date filter field here. But we can't see so so let's quickly get a field number for that date filter 55 i still got it um and in this case we're gonna do a set filter and we're gonna do a customer.get filter so we're grabbing the filter that we we set on on this customer in the wrapper it has no effect on this one because it's just a filter field that will potentially filter uh, uh, flow fields and so on. But but now we just do a get filter to set another set filter. So in reality, boom, now we are printing. So so let's run this. See if everything blows up. Do we want a breakpoint? Maybe we want a breakpoint. Uh, breakpoints are probably good. Uh, and if you're yelling at the screen now that I forgot something, thanks. I probably did, but let's see. So I put a date filter in. I don't put a customer filter in because I run to run this for all my customers. So okay. Now we get the, you see, now we get the with OK and cancel. So we just get, and I think we could probably say that if parameters is blank because then people press cancel and we should not continue running it um but but i'm happy we need print all with balance i say okay we get our break now um and how does this look we get an out stream we open the database we set one filter we set two filters let's take a look at that guy over here, this ref. So we got plenty of filters. We run the report. Let's remove this thing and say F5. And I think, what did we call customer statement separator? Let's do this again without the debugger so we can see. I'm happy with this. 
Boom, 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 record, record, uh, the record. The report is getting generated. So we clearly ran the report, but but now we're just saving it in a template that we then don't do anything about. So how about we, okay, th this is a trick from another video on the channel where we, we're saving stuff in a, um, in a zip file. So let's do that again. So we can do zip and then that's a code unit called data compression that will give us zip. So on this, so let's do if parameters equal blank, then arrow you must select options for the report question mark uh, now we can do zip dot create zip archive and then we can go down here and create a in stream so after the report has been run we go and say templop that now holds the PDF of the report and say create in stream we do that and then we'll do zip dot add entry we'll add the in stream and then we'll do customer dot name plus PDF so we're creating a PDF file with the customer's name and the content in the zip file will be whatever's in the in stream so see that in this case this is this is a great example of a a, a local versus global uh, variable uh, mix where the zip is a global variable so it gets created on pre-item pre-data item, pre -item uh, and in every data item we have a local template that gets populated and we we move the data from from the template into uh, into the zip so the only thing we need to do now is actually create let's put that on here so we can do a trigger on post data item and uh, what do we need well we kind of need this dynamic th trio of a template because eventually what we would like to do is to say download from stream and what are the parameters? Well, the parameters are in stream. We got that. We don't care about all these other things here. And then we need a file name. So we'll create a variable called file name text. Wow, bad typing. I do apologize. File name equal customer statements dot zip. Um, so now the only thing we need to do is actually get some something in uh, data that this in-stream can, can pull out. So for that to end, we need to do a template.create an outstream again. So we create the outstream, and then we take zip, and there's a function called save zip archive that takes an outstream. Uh, and then the only thing we need to do is to create an in-stream from the template and saying, boom. Uh, let's see. Let's see if uh, so. We create an empty zip file up here. We for each report we generate, we add that report to the zip file as customer name.pdf. Then we create a an outstream from a template and we save the zip file to that outstream. We now create an in stream so we can read the same template again. And download from stream. I think it's gonna work. Let's see. So we do this. We say okay. We get the parameters. We say okay. Our report. Boom. We get a zip file up here. Da 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 dum. Hey, I know this is hard to read, but. The zip file. So let's do Alpine Ski House PDF. That opened on another screen, but uh, we can do something about that. And oh, I think I clicked something again. Let's do that once more. 
there we go. A one page zip file with the statement for, for this guy. School of Fine Art, same thing. So this kind of works. Let's take a let's take a quick look at what at what we ended up with. So we have fifty nine lines of code here. So that's not that bad. Um, so we have a report. Outside that report, we kind of created another report with the same one of the same elements. Well, the outer element. So so the if we go and we look at our friend here, the customer statements. We can see that the outer data element is customer. So we have recreated customer here in this report. And then for each record on after uh, get record, we call the original report and we paste in a filter. Paste. We 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 send in a filter and saying I only run the report for this element in the outermost section in this case customer for this customer and then we do some fancy filtering and when we save it as a zip file and then we go back and run it for the next um so i think that's pretty cool so that is how you can separate uh a report into multiple outputs um, and and in reality this could be spiced up to be generic so as long as as it's a customer based um, well actually bonus content here sorry bonus content so if we look at this line and say, so, okay, what in this line is actually uh, hard coded? Well, yeah, we 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 could we could select a different report, right? That would be m the same, and we will select that up here. That will also be the same. Then the ref would have to open against a different table potentially, uh, but but. If this this could easily be turned into a wrapper report that will work on anything that has a customer as the outer uh, uh, the outer data uh, element. Anyway, so I that there's there's options for making this more generic if if you want to, but maybe you don't. Anyway, um, if you need more AL coding, check out this video. It's a good one. I'll see you in there. Take care. Bye.